Hey guys, I want to talk about another passage that's pretty controversial or a verse, and uh, I'm not sure that I have a total grip on this, but I think that I have kind of a new understanding now that I have a new understanding on the coming of the Lord, the day of Christ, the day of the Lord, whatever, you know, as being death, okay? And it's good for those who are believers, we look forward to that day, to be with the Lord, not just to die, okay, but to be with the Lord, to, you know, be absent from the body, present with the Lord, we look forward to that. But, um, and you know, and it comes suddenly, and for those who aren't believers, you know, it comes unaware, and it's not a good thing for them. But anyways, I want to talk about Second Peter 3.10, it says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Now, I'm not sure that I got a total grip on this, but I do think that, from my current understanding, that first of all, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Okay, I see that in First Thessalonians, uh, First Thessalonians chapter five, right after chapter four, where I said it's talking about the the Lord coming at death and you know saints being resurrected, and then chapter five we talk about how it's not good for unbelievers on that day. Okay, their moment of death is not good. And it's the same language, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, so I'm going to take it that it's talking about the same thing. Again, this is talking about when the Lord comes, when the Lord appears, makes himself manifest, when we see him, which is after death. Okay. And it says, the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth and the works also that are therein shall be burned up. So people think that this is some kind of a end times thing at the end of the world, the Lord's going to come and... and totally destroy the world. And I don't think that's what this is saying. I think this is more of a figurative kind of thing. Um, the day of the Lord comes as a thief of the night at death. And then basically, as far as the heavens passing away and the earth being burned up and everything, I'm thinking that I'm saying that those things are former, okay, to the person who has now passed on uh, into eternity, um, you know, or eternal damnation. Those things the earth and heaven, they're, they're gone to that individual, okay? And let's continue reading. It says, seeing then that these things shall be dissolved, okay, that, you know, these things don't, don't matter in eternity, you know, uh, the material things, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, looking forward to that moment, okay? Are we looking forward to the destruction of the earth and everything? No, I don't think so. He's saying, looking forward to being with the Lord. Okay, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Again, he's just it's just saying that to that individual after death, earth and heaven and everything, that's all gone. Okay, that life is over. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Okay, so the new heavens and the new earth, that could be, uh, you know, eternal life on the other side. Again, that doesn't have to mean a new physical heaven, a new physical earth. Okay. Um, you know, a new home. We look for a new home, basically an eternity with the Lord. So I really like this understanding. That understanding to me makes a lot more sense. Uh, you know, it's more spiritualized. It talks about look for him. You want to be found without spot and blameless. And you want to be found without spot and blameless at the moment of your death, because that's when the judgment is, okay? Okay, that's about it for that passage. So I hope that you understand what I said. Um, maybe it can be explained a little bit better, but I, that's really how I see it. I don't see it as literally talking about the earth physically being destroyed, you know, at this moment, at this end times event where the Lord comes and destroys the earth. I think it's more spiritual and figurative uh, to the individual, 
uh, the heavens and the earth will pass away on the other side. And so basically it's saying, you know, don't lay up your treasures on earth, lay up your treasures in heaven, because, you know, um, you know, this stuff and this life will fade away. And I'm sure there are other verses that can be compared to that, which I'll start going on the search for now. Uh, I can't really think off the top of my mind. But, uh, you know, there's got to be plenty of verses that talk about, you know, the things of this, the matters of this life, you know, being nothing compared to the matters of the next life. And that's what we need to be focused on. And that's basically the thought in this passage. So we have to understand that there are spiritual things and um, don't take everything literally like that. Let's understand it in the proper context. And so, you know, let's see if we look at the day of the Lord. I might even have the day of Christ on here. I have the appearing of Christ. I'm putting all these, all this stuff on here. I don't have the day of Christ yet. Anyways, I'll end that here for now. God bless.